that study is one that's really starting to get a lot of attention uh, in the neurology community, I feel. Not necessarily that study itself, hopefully it will. Relatively recent, so it's hard to know for sure. But uh, the concepts are starting to gain a lot of traction. And I think this all really started uh, with that seminal paper in 2009 that came out of Dr. Holtzman's lab uh, and was uh, first authored by uh, Dr. Kang, uh, in which it demonstrated that uh, there are circadian oscillations in amyloid, right? So one of these toxic proteins that contributes to neurodegeneration, uh, that uh, finding was impactful, particularly given the fact that being put to sleep or staying awake actually would influence that. And then it was replicated in humans. And so this really set the field ablaze showing that, well, actually there is a lot of interrelationship between the brain health and uh, sleep. And uh, I think a lot of uh, excellent uh, scientists and clinicians are exploring this question. And we've really started to get a better understanding of this interrelationship between sleep and brain health and brain function. And in the space of cognition, that's one area that we're particularly interested in here over at the Stanford VA Alzheimer's Center, where we're trying to establish those links between thinking both from a absence of disease standpoint, right? So we want to talk about neurodegeneration and what have you and those interrelationships. But then also what this study was kind of focusing on was really the fact that the absence of disease is not the only thing that we're striving for in, in humanity. We're actually striving for optimal performance, right? We want to perform at our best, just like you know, not having a heart attack doesn't mean that you can run a marathon. And so in that framework, we were trying to look at cognition and, and the brain's relationship to, uh, you know, the relationship actually between sleep and biomarkers that might be in sleep and cognitive function. And so a lot of groups have been exploring various biomarkers. In fact, there's this concept of brain age, which is really popular. That's been explored in neuroimaging studies, but also has been explored by individuals like uh, Dr. Westover uh, at Harvard looking at uh, brain age from polysomnograms or sleep studies themselves and what those types of biomarkers might be predictive in. And so we were looking at this from a healthy population of older individuals and we wanted to see, okay, well, is there an underlying signature or signatures uh, in the sleep data rather than just looking at sleep stages, which are, you know, as best we can discern data in an efficient way out of like eight hours of everyone's sleep but instead, can we look at something more and use more advanced technology? And it's not revolutionary. It's just signal processing, things like pulling out spectral data and saying what frequencies are best represented in your brain when you're sleeping. And so we tried to hone in on periods that everybody had, the first phase of sleep, how deep sleep actually, or slow wave sleep is actually represented, not just by somebody looking at it and trying to score or you meeting criteria, but instead just looking at it from a relative sense of like, oh, older brains might have decreases in signals broadly, if somebody has preserved slow wave activity relatively, is that person going to do better on a, on an overnight memory task? And it seems like, yeah, that those individuals did. And so we were really looking at that from the standpoint of healthy brains and maybe something that actually might be able to sift out individuals who, you know, don't meet the clinical threshold of suspicion or concern, but actually might actually have an underlying physiologic process that could be a, an earlier biomarker of, uh, of brain health. And this is something that you can talk about from the standpoint of most neurodegeneration, right? When I think about things like REM behavior disorder or the fact that sleep disruptions happen well before uh, memory problems are, are clinically significant in things like Alzheimer's disease. And so that's really what we were striving for is what does a healthy brain look like when it's sleeping in relation to optimal cognitive performance?